I'm Zach Fieser, an instructor with Ulta3 Research. We thought it would be neat to give away a little bit of our Python training course. If you like what you see here, we offer a four to five day training session that can probably cover any skill set you might be lacking with Python. Typically, we target organizations. So if you're part of the Fortune 500, you're right in our, uh, our sweet spot. But if you're a smaller organization, we're happy to work with you too. If you're a single person, so just like a one-off, we offer public classes. So I want you, regardless, if you're looking for training, who are, whoever you are, go over to ulta3.com and go ahead and look at the different Python training classes we offer. We do more than Python as well, telecom and all sorts of fun stuff, Ansible automation. But if you're watching this, you're probably into Python, right? So we'll have beginner classes, intermediate classes. We'll focus on network automation, server-side automation, whatever you need to do. In this video, we're going to focus on getting Python to talk to Excel. And sometimes we need Python to read from Excel. Sometimes we need it to output to Excel. Uh, regardless of what it might be, this is a very typical, um, this, is a, this is a common request for students to give me, be there, be them network uh, engineers or even server side um, admins. We'll say, Zach, I get a lot of my data sent to me, say in an email, uh, there's some attachment on there. I have a giant spreadsheet that I have to read a bunch of data in or I have to go and search for a bunch of information and produce spreadsheets to send off for some you know, purpose. Well, let's take a, a glance. Let's start to scratch the surface how we can automate away that sort of responsibility. I already have the code written that we're going to work with here. I'm just going to move into it. So if you're wondering, what the heck is LeafPad? LeafPad is just like Notepad, except it's available in Linux environments. Uh, so I'm working in Ubuntu 16.04 right now. Uh, this script with a few tweaks will work in Windows as well, or uh, in your Apple environment. Right off the bat, I see a shebang line here. Uh, shebang line is teaches a Linux environment. Uh, what sort of, of, well, teaches Linux what environment you want your, your script to run in. So Linux doesn't depend on file extensions like .py to understand, oh, I run this in Python. So we just say right at the beginning of our script, uh, hey, Linux, throw this over to the Python interpreter. We really would prefer to run this in a Python environment, not Bash or something like that. Uh, if you're Windows, this won't do anything unless you do some tweaks and install some additional software. It's still best practice to always include a shebang. Next, I want to... Well, actually, these are three commented lines. Oh, these don't actually run. These are just reminders that this code's not going to run. Number one, without this sudo apt install python3 pip. Pip is a tool. Just like, oh, we could say the, the Google Play Store client is a tool on your Android phone. Like we'd say the iTunes Store client is a tool on your iPhone. These allow us to go out and grab software specifically made for our Android device or specifically made for our Apple device. What? the pip tool does is allow us to install software specifically to python there's a bunch of python code already written by other people publicly available for free for us to use we just have to go get it you have to hunt over to the python package index just type it into google python package index and you'll find a searchable repository where you can find all sorts of free code that's available to us out in the world. Some of that code will be PyExcel. So you install PyExcel and then you find out, oh, you install PyExcel XLS if you want to make XLS compatible spreadsheets. 
You can also create XLSX. There's all sorts of different extensions you can work with, but that's what I want to work with in this demonstration. Because I did this out on the command line, I've already done that stuff. I've typed that in on the command line. I can then import Pi Excel. Those are prerequisites. I had packages, stuff I had to pull into my system before my script would run. Import Pi Excel is saying, hey, I need to now use that software written by somebody else. Those lines of code written by somebody else. Pull those in and allow me to work with those in here. That's import Pi Excel. Request data from user is a comment. It doesn't get run. This thing's called a function. And in short, a function is repetitious code. I don't want to keep writing. I just want to reference like a single line and boom, hop to that block and run that block. So white spacing is important in Python. You can recognize this block because it's all indented. And what is this block going to do? Well, initially, input IP is the result of whatever the user types into this question. What's the IP address? Input driver is the result, the string value of whatever a user inputs to this question. What is the driver associated with this device? So the program actually pauses and asks that question. We're creating a dictionary here that we're saving as the letter D. And we're saying we know it's a dictionary because we're using mustache brackets. And we're saying this dictionary contains the key IP and the value input IP which was harvested from the user. It contains the key driver and the value input driver, which was grabbed from the user. So if you're going, key values, what? Dictionaries um, contain key value pairs, where key values, uh, the key is static, it, it doesn't change. It's what we make the request on. And the value is the dynamic piece. And it's super speedy and efficient. So, um, you know, IP, we're, we're, that's going to be a column header. Just like driver will be a column header. And then whatever the user inputs, ultimately, that's going to be under that column. And you'll see that coming up here in just a moment. We're going to return D then. So this dictionary that we created, we're going to return that if somebody calls on this function. So if I jump down to my runtime, this is all comments that I'm going to explain anyways. So don't focus too heavily on that. Here's my code that actually begins running. So this is a function. This doesn't really run unless it gets called. After my import pi excel, at runtime, the first thing that's going to go down is I create, initialize an empty list. Square brackets creates a list. So my list dict gets created. And I print to the screen, hello, this program will make a star.xls file. That's cool. That's what I want. While true, I've created an infinite loop. So what you're saying here, as long as true is true, do the following. Well, true is always true. So I've created an infinite loop. This is usually a bad thing, but... It's sort of a little trick we can use to just, maybe I want a loop to go on for a long time until some conditional pops up. I have a conditional in here, you'll see in a moment. Uh, but this is the block of code that's going to, we think, execute indefinitely here. My list dict, that's this empty list, we want to modify its attributes. So we're using a little method here, the append method. And we're saying what we want to add inside of that list is the result of our function get IP data. Go up to wherever that function is defined, get IP data, and run the code associated with it. So this code runs right there, which returns a dictionary, which is then going to be appended or added to our currently empty list. It won't be so empty now, but it was empty before. Uh, we then record a string called keep going, which is, we say, hey, user, do you want to keep going? Press Q to quit. And then we say, okay, well, look, if keep going, 
we apply the lower method to say maybe they did a capital Q. Regardless, if it's if it tests as a little Q, break. Break escapes us from the infinite while loop. So it's not so infinite after all. All the user has to do is import a Q to that question, input a Q to the question, and we're out. If not, we're going back to the top of the while loop and it's repeating. That would be desired behavior. They didn't give Q, so do it again. In which case, we again call the function, add more data to our list, which will in turn ultimately create a bigger spreadsheet. Once we do finish up with our loop, we say, okay, file name's gonna be, what's the name of the Excel file? We then go ahead and add .xls into the end of that. There's, I know, more efficient ways to do stuff like this. It's the way I chose to do it. So my Excel file is equal to file name, which was our string we got up here. And then we concatenate or just add into it, add to the end of it the string .xls. From the Pi Excel library, we then say, hey, we want to save the record, my list dictionary. So that's the list we created. And the file we're going to save it as is my XLS file. So that was the completed string we created here. Now, let me explain to you how the data is going to show up in our Excel spreadsheet. Any of our keys. So the key IP, which is what we use each time. That's a column header. Just like the key driver is a column header. What the user inputs is going to appear underneath of that column. So if the user makes two entries, dot .10 and dot .20, both of those will be under the column IP. Just like if they put Arista EOS and Arista EOS in twice as the driver, those two drivers will appear under the column header, um, in this case, driver. This is a very basic example. We could create very complicated spreadsheets using Pi Excel. Uh, just how I chose to sort of scratch the surface of this particular package and, and answering this question. How does Python talk to uh, Excel? Um, let's see, when we're done with that, we print to the screen. Um, the file should be in the file directory, and we'll look and it should be there. I'm then going to, because this is, I'm currently trapped in Linux world here, we wanted to see this open in Excel, so I'm gonna mail it to myself or SSH in here and grab the uh, file and I'm gonna open it back in a Windows environment. But let's run it first and then make sure the file actually gets created. Then I'll uh, use the, the editing magic to suddenly show it to you in Windows. I'm gonna close or we're all saved up, no changes. I'm gonna close our script. And I'm gonna go ahead and Python 3 Excel 01 PY, let's let it rip. So, hey, this program will make an Excel file. That's what we predicted it would say. What's the IP address? We'll give it something simple, 192.168.0.1. And that's a Cisco device. And we want to keep going. So I'm going to hit um, Enter. And it says, again, what's the IP address? 10.0.0.1. That's a JUN Juniper OS driver, we'll say. Enter again, 10.0.2.1. Enter. That can be an Arista EOS. One more. We'll do 10.5.2.1. And that can be another Cisco. Okay, I'll hit the Q to quit. And now we're exiting. What's the name of the Excel file? How about um, we'll do pi to x pi to excel okay the file pi to excel.xls should be in your local directory let's find out ls all right so not only is our script there but we also have pi to excel xls uh, i'm going to go ahead and get this out to windows and then we'll take a peek at it um, out in the windows world
So here it is. I went ahead and took our, uh, what we call a pi to excelxls spreadsheet, and I got it out of our Linux environment. Here I am in Windows now, and exactly what we expected to happen, happened. So we have an IP header, we have a driver header, and we have our IP addresses down the side, and we have our drivers down the other side. So imagine if now we took this data not through human input, but we had our script go and read this data from maybe somewhere in our network, maybe from some other sources, who knows, a database or something like that. Imagine we wanted to make a much more complex spreadsheet. We can do all of that stuff. And if you want to learn more, uh, either research yourself, nights and weekends, right? Or hop on over to alta3.com and get in a class with me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and smash the like button. Go ahead and subscribe. And I hope to see you in a future training class with Alta3 Research.